15% of the world's population is a part of the RH negative bloodline. This means that they don't have the rhesus factor in their blood. It also happens to be the bloodline of our royal families of Europe and some of our past and current presidents. As spooky as that may seem, this is not unfamiliar to our ancestors. You see, our ancestors believed in something called divine right, that these ruling elites had a particular bloodline that was special, and therefore they were sent by God to divinely rule over us. In a past video, we talked about King Charles I of England and his execution, and apparently a lot of the onlookers collected some of his blood in handkerchiefs and his blood then went on to cause miracles all over the English countryside, developing a bit of a cult around the executed King Charles I. Well, something very similar happened in France to King Louis XVI when he himself was executed by decapitation. Oddly enough, the execution of Louis XVI in 1793 might be the exact same thing that proves to us if the head found in the attic of a Frenchman in 2008 is or is not the head of the late King Henry IV of France. And it all comes down to that magical bloodline. But before we go any further, you know what to do. Please hit that subscribe button and give us a like. Again, thank you so much to all of our patrons for your support. If you would like to join our Patreon community, there is a link down in the description box below. Welcome to Esoteric Atlanta. My name is Bryce, and today on Mystery Monday, we're gonna go into part two of King Henry IV's decapitated head. into this story or further into the story you need to go back and watch part one if you have not done so part one aired on Friday and in part one we talked about briefly talked about the life of King Henry the fourth but just a bit of a recap for those who did see Friday's video King Henry IV of France, or King Henri IV of France, died in 1610. He died because he was assassinated in a traffic jam. Now, I find it kind of funny that they had traffic jams back in 1600s with buggies. I hate traffic so much, and I live in one of the worst congested cities in all of America for traffic, but anyway. Just thought that was a little funny. But King Henry IV was in his carriage going to see a sick friend when his carriage got stopped in a traffic jam when a man named Francois Ravalec jumped into the carriage and stabbed the king to death. Now Francois was a devout Catholic and King Henry IV, his whole life had been involved in this France's war of religion between the Huguenots and the Catholics and King Henry had been a Huguenot for most of his life and only converted to Catholicism when he actually took the throne of France. King Henry was the king to sign the Edict of Knots that actually gave Protestants equal rights to Catholics. So even though he himself had converted to Catholicism, he pissed off a lot of Catholics by signing this edict. Now, before he was assassinated in 1610, there had already been 17 attempts on his life. King Henry IV of France's decapitation happened, however, in 1793, well over a hundred years after his assassination. His decapitation happened in the same year that his great-great-grandson, King Louis XVI himself, was executed during the French Revolution. And he was executed by the guillotine having his head chopped off. 
Now during the French Revolution, just to sum it up from our last video, a lot of the French people went and pulled up dug up a lot of the bodies of deceased royal family members and basically tore apart their bodies and kind of threw their bodies around. The French people were freaking sick and tired of this divine right and the way that the monarchy had treated them. After King Henry IV's head was removed from his body post-mortem, just like Oliver Cromwell and Oliver Cromwell's traveling head as well, which that link video is linked below too, his head ended up moving from private collector to private collector to private collector. By this point, his head was mummified, so it, it stayed together pretty well, way better than Oliver Cromwell's head stayed together. But nonetheless, by 2008, it ended up in the attic of a Frenchman. The Frenchman ended up turning the head over to determine whether or not this was actually Henry IV or not. In the meantime, another family had also inherited a very strange object. This family had inherited a jar that contained a handkerchief with the blood, the supposed blood, of King Louis XVI. Apparently, this family's ancestor had been present for the execution of King Louis XVI, and once his head was chopped off and blood sprayed everywhere, their ancestor used his handkerchief to wipe up some of the blood. This is exactly the same thing that happened with King Charles I over in England where people wiped up the blood with their handkerchiefs. Because remember, even though King Louis XVI was being executed by the French people for being awful because monarchy is just bullshit anyway, the people still were indoctrinated to believe that the royal family had special blood. Therefore, collecting the blood was good luck. Well, a few years ago, the family that had collected this jar with this handkerchief, this bloody, dried up, gross handkerchief, decided that they were going to send this jar and handkerchief to a geneticist in Barcelona to have the blood tested. At first, all the geneticists could tell was that this was the blood of a European man with blue eyes. Another note, some, something very interesting about the RH negative bloodline that we spoke about in the intro is that a lot of people, majority of people who carry the RH negative bloodline do have blue eyes and blonde reddish hair. As y'all know, I am RH negative as well. I do descend from the English royal family, which is also kind of the French family too, because they intermarried and basically were all the same family. At first, the geneticist could only tell the family that he knew Louis XVI had blue eyes and obviously was a male, so that was really the only conclusive stuff he could find. However, he was aware that someone had recently turned in a skull, a head, that allegedly might possibly be the head of King Henry IV, which would have been King Louis XVI, great-great-grandfather. This geneticist from Barcelona requested to take some of the mummified head to try to find the Y chromosome, the male chromosome, to see if he could match it with the blood sample he had retrieved from this handkerchief. And lo and behold, the mummified head's DNA and the blood were a match. You could tell that these two people were related, just like a great-great-grandfather and a great-great-grandson would be related. Now before that, the people who had the head had done a genetic reconstruction of the head, of the skull, to try to figure out what this person would have looked like. They could tell that there was a mole on one of the nostrils and that the ear, the right ear, had been pierced. Both two things that were present on King Henry IV of France. So at this point, it was looking like the skull had verified that the blood was indeed the blood of King Louis XVI and the blood of 
King Louis XVI on the handkerchief proved that the skull was indeed the skull of King Henry IV. Then along came a French historian named Philippe Delaunay. Have no idea if I'm saying his last name right or not. I apologize if I did not say that right. Again, I am not a French speaker. So we're just gonna call him Philippe. Well, Philippe wasn't buying it. He did not think the skull or the handkerchief belonged to anybody in the royal family. He believed that because the handkerchief and the skull were so old that any genetical testing could not be conclusive. So he teamed up with another geneticist from Belgium to try to track down any descendants of the House of Bourbon to test their DNA against the DNA of the skull and of course the DNA of the handkerchief. They found three different descendants from different branches of the House of Bourbon, three different males, and they tested all their DNA together to find the same, the, the comparative Y chromosome to be the House of Bourbon Y chromosome that they were gonna use to compare against these two old relics. And as it turned out, the DNA from the descendants did not match the skull or the handkerchief. So therefore, a lot of people believed that this skull and handkerchief had nothing to do with the royal family since the descendants did not match these relics that were alleged to belong to their ancestors. However, we have another twist in the story. We know that Louis XVI and his wife, Marie Antoinette, were obviously executed during the French Revolution. We don't know truly what happened to their children. However, we do know that at least one of their children survived and they ended up creating the Pesur family, which is one of the um, most crooked and um, controlling ruling families of our shadow deep state today. If this French historian Philippe and this geneticist from Belgium had tested one of the Pesur's DNA, that DNA could have matched, possibly could have matched the skull of King Louis IV or this skull we have and this handkerchief. But the fact that they tested three other people, well, these three people, they come from the line of Philippe the first, who was the younger brother of King Louis XIV, the Sun King, who possibly had a twin brother, who possibly was the man in the iron mask. Philippe was born in 1640. He was the son of King Louis XIII and Anne of Austria, again, as we spoke about in our episode on the man in the iron mask. That means that King Henry IV was Philippe's grandfather. That also means that Philippe was the great uncle of Louis the 16th. Now, Philippe was married twice and apparently had a lot of children between his two wives. These are the descendants that they tested that are alive today. However, Philippe the first was a homosexual. He was open about it. It's very interesting to read the history books, to read about him as I did when I was studying this case. He was extremely open about his sexuality. In fact, his mother, Anne of Austria, encouraged his sexuality. She encouraged him to cross-dress. She would dress him as a little girl when he was young. She was even quoted as calling him my little girl. Now there's a lot to say about this. First of all, I don't think that these descendants that they tested were actually the descendants of the House of Bourbon. Even though that's the house they're in today, I don't think that they were Philippe's descendants. Yes, he was married twice, and yes, his wives were of noble blood, but I don't think he was able to actually create a baby with a woman. 
And back in those days, they didn't have such thing as DNA testing. So as long as you got a surrogate to impregnate your wife in order to carry on the nobility, and as long as that surrogate maybe looked a little bit like you, then no harm, no foul. We talked about the idea of a surrogate with the man in the iron mask, that many people believed the man in the iron mask could have possibly been the surrogate father of Louis XIV. However, the, to conclude with this little theory with Philippe actually goes back to the man in the iron mask. Many people believe that Anne of Austria encouraged Philippe's homosexuality and cross-dressing because at that point, he was not a threat to his brother, Louis XIV's reign. Yes, we know throughout history, as we talked about with the War of the Roses over in England, families, cousins, brothers have always fought each other for the throne. However, with the idea that Louis XIV could have had his twin brother put in an iron mask as to not usurp his throne, then maybe Anne of Austria kind of knew that if her youngest son was homosexual, then her oldest son would not torture him in order to stop him from taking the throne from him. They say a mother always knows her children. I also find it interesting that with the blood on the handkerchief allegedly belonging to Louis XVI and the skull allegedly belonging to Henry IV and there's a DNA connection, this excludes one of our theories with the man in the iron mask. And again, that is the theory that the man in the iron mask was a surrogate because Henry IV was Louis XIII's father. Louis the 13th was then father to Louis the 14th who was then father the, to Louis the 15th who who was then father to Louis the 16th. If Louis the 13th got a surrogate to impregnate Anne of Austria for Louis the 14th to be born, then Henry the 4th's DNA on his skull would not match the blood on the handkerchief. So we've got in my opinion one theory in the man in the iron mask thrown out. It was not a surrogate father. But going back to the skull and to the handkerchief, in my opinion, in my uneducated, non-biological, I'm not a scientist, I'm not a geneticist, and I'm not a historian, in my just layman opinion, I believe that the descendants they tested for the House of Bourbon were only descendants in name. I don't believe Philippe actually sired any children. Again, I did a huge dive into Philippe on my own to try to come up with my own opinion. And even though I was not there at the time, it really just does not seem like Philippe was interested in women at all and could have gotten a woman pregnant, if you know what I mean. Again, this was the 1600s, so there was no inter vitro fertilization or anything like that. They did not have that technology. To get someone pregnant, there had to actually be a particular exercise that I can't say on YouTube that was performed in order to impregnate the woman. I just do not believe from what I read of Philippe, what I studied of him, I don't believe he had it in him. I don't think that was his cup of tea. So these descendants are not descendants of King Henry IV or related to Louis the 16th. I believe from my studies that the skull did belong to King Henry IV and the blood is the blood of Louis the 16th. They're, they're connected. Their DNA is connected. This geneticist in Barcelona figured it out. They're connected. How, how, what a coincidence, right? If, if they're not who they say they are, then out of all the millions of people that have been on this planet, how the hell would you, the likelihood of finding some random skull and some random handkerchief with blood and do a DNA analysis and find that they are relatives of each other. That, I mean, the, the possibilities of that happening just to some random people are so slim. But the fact that this skull was rumored to be King Henry IV, and we know that the bodies were pulled apart in 1793, the fact that this other family was told generation after generation after generation after generation that this jar had a handkerchief with the blood of Louis XVI, that makes all the sense to me. These objects prove each other legitimate. These descendants, however, only go to prove that they aren't actually descendants. 
Now again, to make it super conclusive, you would probably have to take the DNA of some of the Pesor people, but my hope is those people are probably already arrested for crimes against humanity. That's just my hope and prayer though, because the Pesors are not that great of people. But anyway, my opinion, allegedly, they are not that great of people. But what are your thoughts? Do you, have you heard of the head of King Henry IV of France and this bloodied cloth from Louis XVI's execution? Excuse me. What are your thoughts? Do you think, do you believe the scientists from Barcelona? Are you more inclined with the French historian to think there's something more to the story? What do you think about Philippe I? Do you think that he could have sired children and that disproves these objects belong to the royal family? Thank you once again to Josh McKay for doing our music for this channel and thank you to Todd Roderick for helping me get this video out to you guys. Again, if you would like to purchase the opening song, there is a link down in the description box below. I hope you guys have a fantastic week ahead and I will talk to you soon. Bye.